Hi, you guys. Today I have with me problem 5.8 from Young and Friedman's University Physics textbook. If you find my videos helpful and you haven't done already, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Okay, so a 1,130 1, kilogram car is held in place by a light cable on a very smooth frictionless ramp. The cable makes an angle of 31.0 degrees above the surface of the ramp, and the ramp itself rises at 25.0 degrees above the horizontal. A, draw a free body diagram for the car. B, find the tension in the cable. C, how hard does the surface of the ramp push on the car? Okay, cool. So um, what's really fun is that we already have a diagram for us. Unfortunately, I couldn't find this diagram in the newer version. So like we have a really grainy picture, but it does the job. So we're thankful for that. But let's just go and um, just highlight some features of this diagram. So we have a car and like it says, there's a ramp that has, um, that's the ramp is... At, like risen at an angle of 25.0 degrees above the horizontal. And then we also have a cable that is making an angle of 31.0 degrees above the horizontal with the ramp, with the surface of the ramp. Okay, so first we wanna draw a free body diagram. So let's do that. So let's say, so I'm just gonna go ahead and draw this ramp. And let's say that this is our, we can also use a dot actually. Let's just use a dot just because we can use a box or a dot. It really doesn't matter. But yeah, let's say that we have, this is our car, right? So what are the forces that are acting on this car? Well, of course we have gravity, right? Force of gravity. We have tension in this cable, right? So FT, right? Because this car is being pulled. So there's going to be this force of tension that is um, pulling on this car. And then we also have normal force because the car is in contact with a surface. And so normal force is just the force that is like, it's the force of the surface that's pushing on this car. So that's going to be normal force. All right. And while we have this diagram over here already, and sorry, by the way, I should say that normal force is actually perpendicular always to the surface, right? Okay. So now let's go ahead and actually just draw a... Um, like a coordinate system so that we have like, you know, positive and negative. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and um, the easiest coordinate system that we can establish is that this direction, right, perpendicular to the surface is positive. Right? And then I'm gonna do this direction parallel to the surface is also positive. So this is gonna be your positive Y, and then this is gonna be our positive X. Okay, so there we go. And we are, well, we already drew, so we, we did A, right? So this is A, we drew our free body diagram. Okay, now B, we wanna find the tension in the cable. So what is the tension in this cable? So let's go ahead and do that. So how do we find tension? Well, first let's, if we wanna solve for tension, let's go ahead and write down all of our knowns and then solve for that. So B, actually I'm not gonna write B, I'm just gonna write down knowns first. So knowns, right? We have our mass, which is 1130 kilograms. And then we have um, the angle of the cable, which is 31.0 kilograms. I mean, 31.0 degrees, not kilograms, right? And then we also have 
the theta for the ramp, which is 25.0 degrees above the horizontal, right? And yeah, that's the information that we are given in the question. So that's all we know. And what we're trying to figure out is, what are we trying to figure out? FT. So what is the force of tension? So how do we do that? Well, we want to create a summation. We're going to write down our like forces statements, and then we're going to isolate for the variables, right? Like we always do in like every forces question we ever solve together. So just going to isolate that. Okay. And then let's work with, um, let's do green. Okay. B. So we want to write down the summation of forces in the x direction. And we want to write down the summation of forces in the y direction. And then once we do that, we can isolate for Ft, or we can solve for Ft. Um, but hold on a second. As you guys might notice, Fn is definitely part of our... Um, it is definitely in the y direction, but FT is neither, you know, in the y direction or the x direction. So how do we, how do we like sum the forces in the x and y direction if T and FT and FG aren't um, exactly 100% aligned with the y and x direction? Well, that means we have to use components, right? So we have to go ahead and create components for this question. So how are we going to do that? We have to recognize that FT has a Y component and an X component. So it's going to look like this and this, right? So that is going to be in our like negative X direction, right? And that's going to be in our positive Y direction. And then same with FG, right? So FG is going to have like um, a Y component, right? So a negative Y component. And then it's also going to have a positive X component, right? So we just have to break this down into components and then we can sum our forces. So first, like first off, let's start with the y direction just because I feel like that's a little bit easier to understand. So we recognize that this car is going up the ramp, right? But like it's since this is our positive and negative y, we know that the car is not like jumping up or down, it's not accelerating in the y axis. So that means the summation of forces in the y axis is zero. Zero, right? And let's write down the summation. Well, it's going to be positive Fn, right? Minus, right? Because we have this is aligned with the y axis. And then minus the y component of the force of gravity which is, which is, well, we have these similar triangles. This is 25 degrees, which means that this is 25 degrees, right? So it's going to be Fn minus, because Fg is pointing downwards, Fn minus Fg cos 25, right? That makes sense. And there are, and what else? Oh, there's also a, there's also a Y component of FT. So, and it's pointing upwards, right? So plus FT, and this we said was 31 degrees. So 31 degrees, FT sine 31 degrees. And how do I know it's sine? Well, Cos, the, the rhyme I was taught in like grade 10, and I've never forgotten it since, is um, cos is close, sine is the other line, right? So Ft sine 31 plus Ft sine 31. Cool. That's equal to zero. What about the, um, the x direction? So this direction, right? The x-axis. Okay. So we know that the car is held in place. So if the car is held in place, it means it's not accelerating, it's not moving, there's like, there's no motion whatsoever. So that means the summation of forces in the x direction is also zero. And that makes sense because if it's held in place, then um, summation of forces in all directions is just going to be zero. Okay. And what forces are we working with? So 
there is no X component of Fn, cool, but there is an X component of Fg. So what is that um, X, what is that X component? It's going to be Fg because it's, it's pointing in this direction, which is the positive X direction. So Fg sine 25, right? Fg sine 25. Okay, and then there's also a um, an Ft component in the opposite direction. So there's going to be a minus Ft cos, oh, cos 31, cos 31, right? Because this angle here is 31. Cool. Okay, so now what do we have to do? Now we recognize that we have We can use either of these, right? We can use either of these to, or actually we want to isolate for Ft, right? So we want to isolate for um, either this or this, right? And in this problem, the easiest way to go about this is to isolate using um, summation of forces in the x direction. Why is it easier in the x direction because for y direction we have to solve for fn and fg and do you know what fn is well we're gonna have to solve for that it's going to be um well we're going to solve for fn or fg right and fn is not as straightforward because it's perpendicular like it's not equal to fg in this situation right it's not equal to fg um because they're not like equal and opposite to each other but fg we already know what that is right fg is always just going to be fg is just equal to mass times uh like acceleration due to gravity and so if we look at this um statement right over here all we have is a one unknown in this statement versus we have like two unknowns in this statement so we're going to use this to isolate for ft right so when we isolate for Ft, we have 0 is equal to Fg sine 25 minus Ft cos 31. And then Ft cos 31 is equal to Fg sine 25, right? And we know what Fg is, right? And we can also just um, isolate for T right over here. So Fg, we're going to divide both sides by cos 31. Fg sine 25 divided by cos 31. And that's equal to Fg is just Mg, right? Mg sine 25 over cos 31. And hey, we have... We have everything here, right? So we have mass. We have acceleration due to gravity, 9.8. Um, we have mass because we have mass right over here. And sine 25 cos 31, we can just plug that into our calculators, right? So let's do that. So Ft, I'm um, just going to write it right over here. Ft is equal to 1130 times... 9.8 times sine 25 divided by cos 31. And I'm getting 5,459.9 newtons, right? And that's our answer. Um, you can round. So there's I haven't been using sig like sig figs so far, but if you want to use significant figures, there's three, right? One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Um, the lowest is three. So this is just going to be um Ft is equal to 5460 newtons, right? That's our solution for A or for B, right? Okay, so C. How hard does the surface of the ramp push on the car? Well, that's just asking for Fn. So now we have to isolate and uh, sub in for Fn, okay? So I'm gonna do that in a different color. Let's do my favorite color. No, no, I don't, I don't wanna do pink just cause it doesn't match with this like color scheme. Um, Let's do a darker blue or 
Yeah, let's do a darker blue. Okay. Or purple. I think purple would be kind of fun and it kind of matches. Okay. So C, what is Fn? That's that's really exactly just what the question is asking for. What is Fn? How hard does surface does the surface of the ramp push on the car? So if you want to isolate for if you want to solve for Fn, we have to do um, Fn minus Fg cos twenty five plus Ft sine thirty one is equal to zero, and we just have to isolate for Fn. So Fn is equal to um, Fg cos 25 because we're just um adding you know fg cos 25 to both sides and then subtracting ft sine 31 on both sides cool okay so just going to plug this into my calculator again fn is equal to fg is again we said mg which is 1130 times 9.8 times cos 25 minus Ft, which we solved right over here. And that is, I'm gonna, I'm gonna carry like more significant figures, but your answer might be slightly off depending on how many, I'm only carrying like one after the decimal place, but you should carry more because that makes your answer more um, accurate. I just, I'm too lazy to do that right now. Okay, and so the solution, so the answer that I'm getting on my calculator is 7,224.4 newtons, right? And with like significant figures, that is Fn is equal to 7,220 newtons, right? So that is our solution for A, B, and C. I hope that was helpful. Um, yeah, that's that's our solution. I hope that's helpful. If you find my, if you like my videos, please don't forget to like and subscribe and see you next time. Bye.